Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's good to be gathered again back here in our uh, wonderful worship space after so many months. And good to have all of you here today um, as we worship our God. A few announcements as we begin our worship. Um, Peterson's Funeral Homes Annual Holiday Service, a time to remember, will be available for viewing on the Peterson Funeral Home website. Uh, and Facebook page at 2 p.m. on Sunday, December 6th. Uh, individuals, families, and anyone in the community can watch this service uh, at that time or any time after that. And the service is centered on keeping memories of loved ones alive and remembering the good news of God's promises during the Christmas season following the death of a loved one. So just want you to know December 6th at 2 p.m., that will be available. Well, as we gather, um, this is my first time back in, in, in person in the church worship since March. It's almost kind of odd to be <laughs> gathered together here like this, but it's, it's something I'm uh, thankful for that we can be here together. Um, as we worship today, um, we're going to ask you to, during the hymns, Normally, we love to sing, right? And that's so important to us. Uh, but today, Denise Odella will be singing the hymns. And we're encouraging you to not sing for the sake of your neighbor, 
Um, you can hum along. You can meditate on the words. And uh, we look forward to the day that we can all sing and raise our voices to God again together. Um, the women of First will be taking a thanks offering this coming Sunday, November 15th, a week from today. And also, a position is open at Lutheran Campus Ministry for anybody in our um, online, online audience or here today. Uh, Part-time position for the office manager. Please contact our church office or me, and we can give you more information uh, about that. The fall dinner update. Thank you to everyone who helped with the fall dinner. It was a wonderful meal. really went smoothly. And uh, thanks to everyone who, who made that a possibility. Really, really nice. Our Thanksgiving Eve service will be at 7 p.m. on November 25th. <clears throat> what are some things you are thankful for? You'll give thanks to God on that, on that day, or that evening, as we can every day. That's it for announcements. Uh, does anybody else have any Anything else? If not, then I invite you to stand and we worship our God with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand. The words are up on the screen. And we gather as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. We will listen as we hear the great hymn of the faith, O God, our help, in ages past.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the reading of the word. First reading today from Amos chapter 5, the prophet, uh, speaking about true worship of God. And we begin at verse 18. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm reading, Psalm 70, uh, please respond in the bold print as we read responsibly. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Can we get the psalm up? Oh, okay. Um, uh, o, o Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. A reading from the New Testament letter to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Apostle writes, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. 
Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's easy to get distracted these days, isn't it? With the politics and election, with the pandemic we're, we're living and struggling through, with all of the calamity in the world, with all of the challenges we face as individuals, as communities. It's sure easy to get distracted. And this week I found myself again mightily distracted by the election as the results came pouring in and we wondered, how is this going to turn out anyway? Globally watched, a hugely significant time in our lives and for our nation. And I'll bet I wasn't the only one distracted by all that's been going on. However you and I feel about the election, we can give thanks that we do live in a democracy um, in which we uh, have a say in our elections. We um, live in a country that is of, of the people, for the people, by the people, we, we say and we understand. Meanwhile, Jesus is neither a Democrat or a Republican. A friend of mine, Daniel Hoffrening, I went to high school with him, ended up uh, going to seminary and then he went on to get some graduate work done. Now he teaches at St. Olaf. And he wrote a book quite a few years ago, maybe 20 years ago, entitled Jesus, Neither Democrat Nor Republican. Though I am convinced God calls us to care about politics because it matters for our neighbor, um, I think it's dangerous to align Jesus' kingdom or teachings with one party or the other. We, we border on... Um, um, idolatry or enter into it when we equate one party or another with Jesus or the Christian faith. Today Jesus calls us together whatever our politics, urging us not to lose sight of the calling we have as people called into relationship with him. Whatever our politics, we are gathered as God's people today. And that's the most important thing right now. In Jesus' day, weddings were very, very significant events as they are today, but they were much more elaborate, believe it or not, than even today. <clears throat> Sometimes they could last four or five or six days, even a week, I understand, depending on the particular couple and maybe their families and the wealth or not of the family. But part of the... Um, Part of the uh, significance of this uh, as we read the parable today is that just as Jesus talks about, um, there were oil lamps. Olive oil was the you know, preferred oil. Very laborious to make olive oil. But they didn't have electricity, right? We may forget that. So oil lamps were essential for any activity in the dark. Weddings, 
would go into the dark and they'd go over, overnight and several days, like I said. So the bride, or the bride lived in her family's home, the groom in his family's home. But at the wedding, the groom or the bridegroom, as referred to in our parable, would go to the bride's home to pick her up. And the bridesmaids would be with her. And then there would be a procession back to the groom's home where there would be a great festival, great celebration, of course, with food and dancing and all of that. And so the bridesmaids had a very significant role. They had to carry the lamps, have enough oil so that the celebration could go on, right? The light was and is effective in the darkness. The wise five bridesmaids brought extra oil. The foolish, as they're called, foolish bridesmaids did not. That's significant, the extra oil. They all fell asleep waiting for the bridegroom to come, it says. And finally at midnight, when they probably were fast asleep, the, the bridegroom shows up and some of them, well, they all wake up. They all wake up, they, they trim their lamps, it says, but five of them didn't have enough oil to make the trip all the way back to the groom's home. And the door was shut on them because they had to go off and get more oil. What are we to make of this anyway? Matthew's audience and the time of Jesus was a time when Christians had been cast out of the synagogue and they were uh, under some distress uh, because of that. And some of them maybe were wondering, is it worth it? Should I hold on to this new faith in Jesus that I've been called into and I've discovered through the word of others, the apostles and so on? Meanwhile, others were worried what happens to our loved ones who have died before the Lord returns. They're anticipating Jesus' return, imminent return, at any time. And um, here they're still, they're still waiting, right? So many thought Jesus would return by this time. This is only 70 or 80 A.D. by the time Matthew is writing his gospel. So, as I said, the five unwise bridesmaids, uh, those without enough oil, asked the five bridesmaids who had extra for some of their oil. Well, what happens? Do they give it? No. They say, hey, we, we have to keep this so that we have enough oil for our lamps. Go to the merchants and buy your own and then come back. Well, in the meantime... Um, you know, the, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice announcing the bridegroom was coming, had been announced, that's why they woke up, but then the bridegroom had come and they were off to the merchants. How do we understand this? One of the ways, I think, of, as I reflect on this, is that in our own context, sometimes we have to say no to expectations or demands or invitations to us we can't be all things to all people and sometimes we can stretch ourselves too thin there's an expression when you're flying remember that one have you, any of you been on the plane what do they say when if if the oxygen masks come down and there's need for oxygen be sure to put your mask on first before you try to help your neighbor with their mask there's some truth to that for us in our lives. We need to have enough oxygen and energy to respond to our neighbor. And um, we do need to take care of ourselves so that we have something to offer others. And if we are uh, getting too th stretched too thin in our different activities and in our different responses to trying to be involved to help uh, live out our life of faith, uh, we, we may run out of oxygen. We may, we may just not have enough to do anything very well. Have you ever been in that situation? You felt you just had an, 
your plate was full, but somebody asked, could you be on this board or could you take this on? I think many of you know about that. It can wear us out so that we have nothing, no oil left in the tank. Sometimes we simply need to say, I'm sorry, I just can't do that now. That's one take on this. Let's look at another. The banquet symbolizes the last judgment. Okay? The key symbol of the parable is the extra oil that the wise bridesmaids had and the foolish do not have. Luther said that the extra oil refers to faith active in works of love. This is going to sound just like the opposite of what I just said before, but I think both need to be held in tension. The oil, Luther said, represents faith active in works of love. So the key point of the parable then is that the foolish bridesmaids are not ready when the great moment finally arrives in life or in death. In life or in death. Being ready means living in faith active in works of love. Loving our fellow Christians, loving our neighbor, forgiving others, prayerful faith, abstaining from immoral behavior, and loyalty to Jesus. Loyalty to Jesus. Jesus is simply telling us what, uh, just what he says at the end of the parable. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. None of us know the day when we will be taken from this life. None of us know. My brother was 48 and in perfect health, almost perfect. Uh, he could run a marathon. He could portage a canoe in a pack when he was suddenly taken from this world uh, just like that. What a reminder to my family of how quickly life can be taken from our midst. And then we need to own our responsibility. We cannot say, well, my mom had faith. My dad had enough faith and I can just depend on them. Or I confirmed my faith in God when I was 15 and that settles it. I don't need to pray or go to worship or fellowship with other Christians or read the scriptures. Really? Distractions are everywhere. Pressures are around us and within us. Yet God continues to call us, to revive us, to renew us in faith. So we will trust God, right? Through elections, calamitous pandemics, personal trials. These are not new to humankind. Trusting in the promise of God's word of life, speaking to us, renews and sustains us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, writes Paul. And then we keep to the basics. Loving deeds, prayer, study, fellowship, worship with sincere hearts, open hearts, seeking God's will, loving God and our neighbors as ourselves. Keep alert, keep awake, for our salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Thanks be to God. Amen.
invite you to stand and let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church on earth, we proclaim our faith in these words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with a word from Adrian Hilbrandt. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so most of you have probably received at least one letter in the mail so far. Maybe two? Is the second one gone out? Well, yeah, I think okay. I don't one know if I've received both yet, but I know I've received the first one for sure. Yeah. But our church is planning once again our Consecration Sunday celebration. And to say that it's been easy to plan this during this time is, is an understatement. Because we understand that a lot of our congregation, along with everyone, has been affected so much you know, throughout this year, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually. There's a lot of things going on right now, besides the normals of life, um, that cause problems. But I think at the same time, I think about myself and how much time we've had you know, to spend at home with your family or with just your loved one, or just the time you've had not busy out doing the things you've had. And hopefully it's giving you the time to ponder a little bit what you have been blessed with and what God has provided you in your lives and how much he is there for us each and every day to help us through these times. And so as we continue to look at this, you, you wonder, you know, how is God calling me in my life to continue to give his grace to others? And what can I do in that? And that's kind of where our Consecration Sunday celebration comes. Um, God is asking you to give not because the church needs you to give, not because we need to, you know, take care of what the church needs, but to give because you want to help others. It's beyond these walls. It's the mission work. It's, it's our um, kids' programs, like our new fusion program. There's so much more that our church does and so much more that we can do, in, you know, spiritually by helping to give and to help, you know, spread God's word around the world. You know, even with our missionaries across other countries, we're helping people everywhere um, with what we can give. So things are going to be a little different this year as we plan this. You know, most of the time we'd be having you fill out a reservation card here because our celebration will be on November 22nd up at the elementary school in the concert hall. It'll be a 930 service. We're hoping that many of you will feel comfortable coming there because we can spread out quite a bit there. Um, it will be a catered meal. So you will be having a box lunch given to you at the end of the service, which you will take home to share with your um, others at home. You won't, we won't sit down and have a meal because of the situation. So normally we would be handing out cards, a reservation card, but that won't be happening this year. Um, you should be receiving them via email. And we ask that everyone please try to return those, whether you will be attending or not, so that we can get a count and we know for sure who's planning to be there. Um, so I think is the first one up there, the first... Yeah, um, can we get that other one? I think the other one maybe to start, yeah. Up there, okay. Okay. So you should be receiving this via email as well. Um, for those of you who don't email, you could, if you're not receiving a hard copy, which that's what we're going to try and do for those we don't have an email address for, um, so if you don't receive some of this stuff via email, we'd ask that you contact Rita or contact the church and make sure that you're getting this stuff. But this first chart um, just kind of gives us a breakdown of the giving within our church. 
And if you look at the very bottom there, um, you start in the very step, which is $0 um, per week. But let's go up to the next step and shows us that 25 members are giving in that step. And as you go up, that is filled in, right? This one? So they can yep, see it. It's the yep. step one, yeah. So then as you go up, you can see that eight members are in the 5 to $10 a week range. 25 members are in the 10 to $20 range. And this is perfectly, I mean, we accept and anything that God is calling you to give is, is, is what you should be giving. We don't you expect you to give more than what you can give. We don't expect you to give less. I mean, you know, what you're comfortable with in giving. So we're not judging by looking at these steps. What we're doing is just showing where we're at. And then if you go to the next, um, next slide, is it there? Yep. Okay. So this one kind of gives you, so you can see where you're at on that step where you're at right now in what you're giving. And this one, if you, um, if you can find out where you're at with your weekly income, and then you go over, and so, you know, if your weekly income is $400 and you were at the $20 range, so you'd go to the $400, you'd slide over to giving $20, so you're at a 5% is what you're giving right now. That might be all that some people can give right now. But what we're asking during this time in the next couple of weeks is for you to ponder, you know, can I give a little more? Has God blessed me a little bit more? And like I said, this is, is a very difficult time, so we understand. But, you know, we want you to talk to God about this, you know, and, and how can I grow and how can I spiritually, you know, give to my church and to help continue grow things beyond these walls? Um, I touched on that it would be up at the school, 930, the concert hall. If you're not planning to attend, like we said, we'd love for you to turn in that reservation, you know, selling us you're not going to be there. But we also really would appreciate it or would like you all to try and um, tune in that morning. It'll be broadcasted live again like we have been doing. Just to be there to, you know, with the congregation if we can try to all follow along on that service. Um... So the, um, the commitment cards, we're going to give those out that day, I think? The nope. actual commitment card, or we're not going to now? No, we'll do, no, we do that at uh, that day of the consecration. Yep, so. the day of, con yeah, that's what, we'll give those out that day. But if you're not going to be with us that day, we'll be mailing those out after that. Right. So that, yep. so that you'll get that afterwards and have the chance to fill that out and send it in. Yep. Um, and once again, that's just... Kind of giving you, by filling out the card, I mean, it, it's not that we want to see the numbers, see that. What it is, it's kind of solidifying what you decided you can give. And when you're writing it down, it kind of gives you that incentive to try and continue to give that much or to, you know, to grow that much within yourself. So I think I covered everything we needed to that vote it. Okay. Once again, if you have any questions, give us a holler. We've been... Trying to do this the best we can during these times. But. Thanks, Adrian. Yeah, we, you put it very well. We know that this is a really difficult time for so many people, and some people are not going to be able to give what they gave last year because of their job situation or what have you. But we just uh, we, we hope that we can all try to do the best we can, and if we can grow a step, that's fantastic growing in our giving um, in response to the good news of the gospel and uh, our, our ministry and mission. Thank you again, Adrian. I I can take that off now. Okay. Um, we will be taking an offering today, but we're, we'll just ask you to, uh, some of you left your offering on the way in. Uh, if you would like to leave it as you leave today, we won't be passing plates to protect from spreading any germs. So um, there is a globe at the back of the church as you are ushered out today if you'd like to leave your offering. Um, I'm going to call on Denise to sing our offertory at this time.
Let us pray. O God of light and life, renew and revive your church throughout the world that we may be a beacon on a hill, a source of hope and joy to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, as you know so well, our country is divided in many ways. We humbly beseech you to bring healing to our nation. Guide us, Lord, toward greater unity of purpose. Inspire us toward deeper mutual respect. Guide our President Donald Trump and our President-elect Joe Biden to build bridges, to overcome animosity, promote trust, rebuild unity, and work together to overcome the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks that we continue to live in a democracy where free and fair democratic elections occur of, by, and for the people. We offer our thanks for those who work tirelessly to count ballots and for all those who voted. May the current administration graciously accept the will of the people and abide by the time-honored values that have made our nation the envy of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your compassions never fail, and your mercies are new every morning. Strengthen those who work among the sick. Give them courage, confidence, and endurance in all that they do. Bring healing to those suffering from COVID, other illnesses, those living with cancer, Give protection and peace to those living in war zones and other violent situations. Grant, O God, justice to those unable to speak for themselves. Heal our racial divisions. Use us as agents of your healing and justice in our community and the world. We remember especially Mick Rose, David Ulrich, Randy Hokanson, and all for whom we pray, asking for your healing power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, but always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of the peace with a wave or an elbow to an elbow or (laughs) peace of the Lord is with us by God's grace okay we turn to our sending hymn and we listen to lift every voice and sing
Receive the Lord's benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your presence in worship today. It's really good to be with everybody here to worship our God. Thanks be to God. Hope to see you soon. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The ushers will usher you out today. Michael. Hello, Lori. Hi, Michael. Good job. You're good at that. We'll have you do it again. Thank you. Good to see you, Pam. Hello, Sharon and Doug. Nice, nice uh, coverings there. You even got the library one. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, Hope you find it. Skip, good to see you. How you been? Good. By the grace of God. Yep, beautiful day out there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Jim and Marilyn. No, that's from uh, Della Conroy. From, from Hancock. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a visual artist. I can sit... I can sing, but I can't paint. <laughs> Morning, Carol. I'm doing fine. How are you? Good to see ya. Good morning, Ward. Good to see ya. Yep. Well, we had plenty of room, didn't we? 